In this video, we'll look at our Warren Buffett-based model, which is based on the book Buffettology. Of course, Warren Buffett has never fully disclosed his exact investment approach, and he probably doesn't have an exact formulaic model. But if he did, how might we try to capture it? Whether he's buying public stocks or companies outright, Buffett tries to buy great companies at reasonable and fair prices with the hope that these will be long-term compounding machines. If we were to try to capture the concept of buying great companies quantitatively, how would we try to find those firms? How might we uncover companies with characteristics of competitive moats around their businesses? In order to find those companies, and this is the key investing insight I'd like you to remember, is we can look at the long-term consistency and growth in earnings, along with long-term returns on equity and capital, to help us try and determine if a company has a competitive moat around its business. The strategy overview at a high level is this strategy seeks out firms with long-term predictable profitability and low levels of debt relative to profits that trade at reasonable valuations. The model goes as far back as a decade in a company's history to uncover stocks with competitive moats around their businesses. The source and the evidence behind this strategy, as I mentioned, this is based on the book Buffettology. Also, Buffett's track record is amazing. Since 1965, Warren Buffett has compounded over 20% per year. So that's over 53 years, he's generated over a 20% annualized return. The investment thesis is this, buying high quality stocks at a discount can produce a less volatile way to access the outperformance of value stocks. And if you're lucky, maybe you'll find Buffett-like stocks before he actually buys them. Now let's look at the actual model implemented on Validia. First is that Buffett wants to see consistent long-term predictable earnings. This model goes as far back as 10 years to see if profits are growing over time and are consistent. Over many 10-year periods, you'll see economic expansions and contractions, so it will give you a sense of how a company's profits react to economic conditions and competition. By looking at 10 years worth of earnings, it helps give Buffett confidence in the future earnings power of the company. One reason Buffett avoided technology stocks up until recently is that he didn't fully understand them and their earnings were oftentimes highly variable and volatile. Next, he wants to see higher than average long-term returns on equity and capital. The model looks at 10 years of ROE and ROC or return on assets for financials. If a company has an above average return on equity or return on capital for 10 years or longer, this helps indicate there's a competitive moat to a large extent around the business. It could be a strong brand name, they could be a low cost producer, they could be a toll bridge company, but something about the company helps it maintain higher than average levels of profitability and that's attractive to Buffett. Buffett also doesn't like too much debt. He wants to see that earnings can pay off debt in a reasonable amount of time. If debt can be paid off within five years worth of earnings, that is a good thing according to the model. Businesses that have to invest too much capital in terms of capital expenditures aren't as appealing to Buffett as those that don't. So as a result, this model rewards positive free cash generation. Share buybacks are another positive in the model. It wants to see that companies are buying back their shares, what are at hopefully fair and reasonable prices. And then it looks at retained earnings. The model looks to see how retained earnings have contributed to the profitability of the company. So the model that we run takes the total retained earnings for the past 10 years and compares it to the total gain in EPS over that same period. Lastly, the model uses two methods, the return on equity and the earnings per share method to calculate the future stock price. It tries to get at the question, is the price at these levels right? And is the future returns on the stock acceptable and attractive? There can be a wide variation here. So we take the average of these two calculations to determine the future expected return.